I tried so hard. I tried so hard. <laughs> no amount of makeup and wardrobe can compensate for not having any gas in the tank. What is up guys? Welcome back. I am pretending to be high key today, but to be honest, I am like in a really low key mood, which is not what you would think by looking at my eyeshadow. I saw this as a vision in a dream last night. I was like, wait a second, if I let her, and I just like made it a reality today. It is two of these shimmery shades from the new Pat McGrath Utopian Dream Palette, as well as Urban Decay Freebird and Urban Decay Eye Pencil in Psychedelic Sister. I'm gonna be talking more about Miss Pat McGrath a little bit later on, so I won't dwell on that. But anyway, today's a fresh favorites. That was terrible for the algorithm. I just hopped into something that was totally irrelevant. You guys know how favorites work. So these are gonna be my favorite things from August. Let's go ahead and jump into those favorite things from August. I want you to know I filmed that intro like eight or nine times before I landed on what I landed on and that was the best one. So if you're wondering how I'm doing. All right, I'm going to kick this video off the same way that I typically do. And that is by talking about some of my makeup favorites, makeup, body, you know, the things that we typically talk about on my channel. And the first thing is this, I cannot stop using it. This is the Fenty Beauty Body Sauce. I have it in Pearl Swirl 01. If you didn't watch my collab, it's kind of been a month of little collabs, hasn't it? If you didn't watch my collab with Kate the Great Beauty earlier this month, this could feel random, but it is not. And if you watch her channel, it's definitely not random because she loves it so much and she got me completely hooked on this. I've been a reluctant self tanner forever because sometimes I'm just in that mood and this is so much easier than that. <laughs> because I don't have to tan my whole body and stand around naked smelling really bad because I don't know what it is about self tanner, but like it cancels out my deodorant. It just makes me really body odor-y like for the entire time that it's on my body, not just like while it's cooking. As I'm tan, I also smell, I don't understand that. So it's always just been a hang up. I you know, know that there are a lot of complaints about self tanner. It is obviously healthier than being out in the sun and getting a real tan, but at the same time, it has a lot of shortcomings all that to say, this is great. <laughs> it's, it doesn't not get on your clothes, but I mean, you know, makeup gets on your clothes, you know, full stop. But it's fantastic at blending down. It's basically a body makeup that makes you look tan. It comes in a whole bunch of shades and I got the fairest one. I like this so much because when you do actually like put it on your body, if you don't get every single inch of yourself, it doesn't have some kind of really obvious line of demarcation. It just looks blended in a really, really nice natural way. And granted, you know, I'm also not trying to do too many standard deviations from my natural skin tone. I don't know what would happen if you did, but this does make me look naturally tan. There's something really lovely about it because it's not orange at all. It's a really like neutral to cool kind of color. And so I use it on my face and my neck, but as you can see, like you build it up and it almost looks like a bra tour and it does dry down on its own. But if I blend it out completely, it just gives my skin a really believable tan color and it feathers at the edges, you know, pretty much on its own. So this is with it, this is without, and it's super natural. You can build it. It's the same kind of thing that I used to camouflage my, tan lines from my sports bra at my wedding, you know, on my back. And I just think that it's a really, really good addition to my routine, especially because I've been trying to phase out things like the deep bronzy drops from Drunk Elephant. They don't really work that well for what they're really trying to do. And I like to have the option to kind of deepen my foundations sometimes, but this is a lot more neutral and I like it. I like it a lot more from a flexibility standpoint. It's just a lot more useful and $48 gets you 3.2 fluid ounces of this. Thank you to Kate the Great for recommending this. I enjoy it all day, every day. <laughs> Out day every day. I swear guys, like, you know, I was talking about this. There are days where I think I'm talking to a lot of people and there are days where I realize I am in a room alone talking to a camera. Today is an in a room alone talking to a camera kind of day. Hence this eye look, to be honest, like this was just for me, like entirely for me. And apparently for my backdrop because um, I match. Oh yeah, okay. So we're gonna talk about some eyeshadow palettes here. The first, almost feeling like a throwback at this point because we just made such a big deal about the new Pat McGrath palette a couple videos ago, but I cannot 
Ugh. I cannot open this, apparently. This one is particularly hard to open. I have tons of his compacts, but this one is just really stubborn. Regardless, this is the Wayne Goss The Luxury Eye Palette, his new Pearl Persuasion. And she is just so pretty. This celestial shade is one of the most exciting, subtle, gorgeous, wearable color texture combos that I have had in a really long time. It is peachy, reflective, wet look. The first time I ever saw a finish like this, which, you know, quickly became one of my favorite finishes on any kind of cosmetic product, was actually the Fenty Diamond Bomb Highlighter. And I remember watching Rihanna's makeup artist do Nikki of Nikki Tutorials makeup on her channel and starts putting that diamond bomb on her cheeks and it literally looked wet. And I was like, <laughs> like I couldn't believe my eyes when I was looking at it and I ordered it immediately. And since then the Aether highlighters do something extremely, extremely similar. And I feel like these celestial shadows that I've been coming into more frequent contact with in probably the last year or so from Charlotte Tilbury, Wayne Goss, now Pat McGrath, they are just still my favorite thing to put on my skin because it's just like painting with magic. Pat McGrath's ones are a little bit more rough. Someone used the word gritty yesterday. I would describe them as a little bit gritty and this is just creamy soft. It's so satisfying. I have no complaints about any of them, but I do find that this one has less fallout because it is a little bit like smoother. A little, it almost feels like it's a little more emollient. I really, really love the setup of this palette because it has the right amount of like cool versus neutral for me and my skin tone and my wants. It is set up to be a easy to use kind of bridal color palette. And I think that it works for a lot of very natural looks in that respect. You can get a ton of different looks out of it, all of them quite subtle. Even when I try and build this up and make like a really, really exaggerated smoky eye, it's still pretty subtle. So yeah, if you're looking for a pretty like tame palette that's also just incredibly beautiful and feels really luxurious while you're using it, this is wonderful. I really, like it's my favorite thing I think that he's come out with. Yeah. Yeah, if I don't talk about it now, I'm just going to keep alluding to it and I won't have anything to say when I get to it. So yeah, the new Hutopian Dream. It, this thing is ridiculous. And granted, I know that probably all of her palettes have something really exceptional to offer. I don't think anybody's like, well, that one was a dud. And I did go to Sephora yesterday. A lot of you guys had commented on this video and said that I should try out some of her quads because a lot of them are full on just the glitter shimmer confetti. I call it confetti texture because it is kind of gritty. And I saw it and I was like, yeah, you know what? At some point when there is a sale, like at Sephora or something, I'll probably pick one of those up. But I even, I always talk to myself. When we don't wear masks anymore, like when someday when masks are an abnormal thing for someone to be seen wearing, I'm going to be in big trouble because I talk to myself constantly <laughs> while I'm shopping. And it does make it easier to hide it when you have a mask on. Granted, people can still hear me, but they're like, who said that? I'm like, I don't know. I saw them and out loud to myself, I said, I don't need that right this second. Like I'm good for now. I can do with what I have because I still want to stay excited about my Pat McGrath palette. It did cost me $125. I love that she put out a discount code and I just missed it. I was just like, oh, it was during that video. You guys actually watched me in real time in a video order this palette. But either way, we have three gorgeous confetti glitter shades. We have a, an amazing trichrome. This trichrome looks like an oil slick and it's unbelievable. Two really, really fantastic just tonal shimmers and a satin that Amanda is not excited about. <laughs> I find it to be useful for blending and things like that, but I understand, you know, coming to a Pat McGrath palette, you want every single one of them to like, you know, send you straight to space and that one doesn't. And then her mattes are exceptional. So I do feel like there is a lot to be had here in terms of a good like wearable look, but this is definitely a more adventurous palette. For example, then my Divine Rose palette, she does make more tame palettes and more artistry oriented palettes in my opinion. And this one lends itself so beautifully to that artistry mindset, but it doesn't have anything that's like super wild in it. You know what I mean? There's no like straight up blue, straight up green, like really cool silver or anything like that. Like they are still pinks and purples, corals, golds. So it is so richly pigmented, so beautiful. And the payoff is just unbelievable, like unbelievable. 
but it is definitely a little bit more out there. Like this coral, I feel like is kind of the cornerstone of this palette because everything can kind of like spring forth from that. Absolutely gorgeous. I've been having so much fun with it. As you can tell, because it literally infiltrated my dreams last night so that I could concoct this <laughs> while I was sleeping. <laughs> I actually have three fragrance favorites. <laughs> this is really weird for me. So the first one was sent to me and I actually have no idea how much it is. I should look, I should look because it's probably really expensive. So House of Sillage, House of Sillage. What is this one? Whispers of Enchantment. Oh my God. What? They sent me a $360 perfume? Fam, I was gonna talk about this, but like, I feel bad. It smells fantastic, but like, I don't know about $360. I'm just, I, you know what? It smells really, really good. It's got kind of a minty thing to it. It's very like, gardeny and floral. I have two fragrance favorites this <laughs> month. I got two at Sephora recently. So the first one is Nest Turkish Rose. I went on a, a journey, a mini journey around the mall and smelled everything in sight. I went to all the beauty counters. I went to all the department stores. I went everywhere and just smelled everything. I came home reeking, like giving myself a headache. But the two that I decided on one was this one, the Turkish Rose Perfume Oil from Nest. And I love Nest candles. I'd never had one of their perfumes before, but mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. My favorite smells are usually either citrus, vanilla, or rose, but they gotta be the right citrus, the right vanilla, and the right rose. Like I don't want any cedar in there. I don't want any musk. Sometimes, oh, sandalwood, mm -mm, none of that. None of those like Abercrombie and Fitch kind of smells. And with rose, I don't want to feel like I'm like breathing in air freshener. This is so uncommon for me to like because it's actually very sweet. Like as sweet as Ellis Brooklyn sweet. And it's actually called sweet, they're salt, they're sweet. I always compare things like that to like Flower Bomb, Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb, because that is like too cloyingly sweet. I almost like it, but it's just like, almost like sugary on my nose palette. And this stops just shy of that. And it also has something nostalgic to it that I can't put my finger on. Because obviously it has something to do with like me, not, not anything that anybody would probably relate to, but it's, you just, mm, it's so nice because it is, it's rosy, but up front, it's more, the word is round because sometimes like Chloe Roses, which is another one of my favorite, it's a little bit more pinched in the nose because it's almost a little more vegetal. This has this really beautiful round, sweet approachability to it. And it's just so nice. It smells like actual rose candy but not like, I don't know, it's not sickening. And it's an oil. Maybe that's also why it's not sickening is because it doesn't have that like alcohol thing behind it. It's just freaking wonderful. And this is a brand that I had never heard of called The Seven Virtues and they have like benefits that they, you know, give the money to. So it says this perfume supports local education and healthcare. And this is called Vanilla Woods. Oh my God, it smells so good. And when I say woods, you know, you would think that it was going to be woody, maybe sandal woody, maybe burny, cedar smelling or something. And a lot of the vanillas that I smelled were like that. There's a vanilla absolute, and I smelled maybe from Nest yesterday. And I was just like, huh. I don't want anything that I wear to smell like I'm walking behind a rich Italian man at an airport. <laughs> Some people like that smell, it's not my thing. This smells a little bit like, I'm going to reminisce here, 
Victoria's Secret Vanilla Lace. <laughs> a little bit like that if you were to just scale it up ever so slightly, but like I had like mixed feelings about that because I was like, man, I love that smell, but like, should I pay for a perfume when I could just go get Vanilla Lace from Victoria's Secret? I don't think they make Vanilla Lace anymore. I'm not sure, but it's that level of just a really nice, chill, medium palette, lovely, light, feminine vanilla smell, so. I personally love to mix my smells together. You, you guys know that because I talk about it with my lotions because I think that, for example, vanilla and citrus go together beautifully, especially like orange. It smells like a really, really sophisticated dreamsicle. And then on the other hand, I do have like a really great rose lotion that I mix with like a vanilla lotion and it also does a very similar thing where everybody's like, you smell fantastic. So these mixed together on me, rose vanilla, it's just like the most sophisticated. Oh, hell yeah. And I would love it if someone were to be like, what's that perfume you're wearing? I'm like, actually, it's a custom blend. <laughs> you know, I love being that person. But the packaging is also really beautiful on these. And I'm starting to realize that I'm gonna have like a rollerball problem. I also smelled a lot of candles while I was bopping around the mall yesterday. And I realized that just, you know, little uh, quick, quick course here. I do not like, I don't know if it's new, but it's seasonal, the chai, pumpkin chai smell from Nest, but I do really want their like holiday, fall, autumn plum one. It smells delightful. All right, I have one fashion fave this month and it actually stems from a media fave from last month. I talked about how I had been watching and really enjoying the new, newer second season of Making the Cut from Amazon Prime. It is basically <laughs> Jeff Bezos <laughs> takes Project Runway and gives them a whole lot more money. So it is very well produced. It is a lot more experienced designers in most cases. So they understand brand strategy and marketing and basically, you know, a whole vision of fashion. And they also get a million dollars when they win instead of like a hundred thousand dollars, which is, you know, pretty awesome. So that did end. We all know who won and everything like that. I'm not gonna spoil that. But the contestant on there who was my favorite, as far as her actual like clothing, you know, not just her personality or whatever, was Allie. And she, I had to look it up, owns a brand called Seeker. Seeker apparel, whatever. And it's all, I mean, you guessed it, unisex, organic, sustainable hemp, because that's my thing. And I bought a jumpsuit from Seeker. It was expensive, it was expensive. It was like $250, but I was like, hey man, I believe in buying, you know, sustainable hemp things. They just tend to last. This thing is so nice. I wore it into the city when I went to see State of Kate and it was like breathable and lovely and it like wore in really nicely. I am every day checking my email for the next update where they tell me that the tie-dyed ones are back in stock because she has some tie-dyed ones in like this saffron color. And then there's one that's kind of this like murky, like brown kind of, I think she calls it okra. I want like probably both of them. And she, that's the thing is she was wearing all her own stuff on the show. And like the whole time I'm like not even hearing the words I'm going, where did you get the tie-dye jumpsuit, you know, <laughs> because I need it. And they're just really, really comfortable and very uh, like androgynous, kind of fun to like, you know, tie the waist either up or down or whatever, make it a little bit more feminine, a little bit more masculine, whatever. And I just really enjoy the quality of the clothes. I'm so glad that I watched that season so that I could discover her and her style. And it's like, you know, another brand for me to you know, follow really closely because I closely align with the brand's values. So that is, it's just really cool. You guys know how excited I get about being inspired and fashion. And I love also twists on minimalism and her stuff is very like minimalist with a twist. Yeah. So that's where a lot of my money's been going. All right, I have a food fave and then we're gonna get into media real quick. So. My food fave that I've been meaning to mention for probably three videos now, like three favorites videos, is Fly By Jing. I'm sure that you guys have heard about this, but there is the Chili Crisp, and then when 
they saw me post about it on Instagram, they sent me a big boy of their Zhang sauce and I genuinely cannot pick a favorite. They are so good. It is basically this mixture of Asian flavors and I guess Sichuan peppercorns and chili flakes and chili oil. And it's just, oh, the spicy one, the regular chili crisp, you just, you can mix it with anything. You can put it on anything. And my uh, father-in-law is extremely picky, but he loves spicy things. And apparently he got, I've gotten him hooked on it. And then they sent the Zhang sauce and man, it's that, but sweet. <laughs> it's so good. I made uh, chicken thighs that had been like seared really well so that the skin got crispy. And then I took the chicken out. It was in a cast iron pan and I put saffron yellow rice in it to kind of like fry up the edges and then put the chicken back on top and then i put it in the oven so it could cook in all the chicken drippings and you know that was just straight up gosh darn delicious but then you put that fly by jingjiang sauce on there and it becomes a transcendent experience it is so good it is also quite expensive but we went through the first small jar in a week <laughs> So I went for the big jar, which was like $38, but it is so worth it. And I think that they are in the process of getting funded right now. And so they're going to be in Costco, in Target, in other places. But right now you can get it on Amazon and follow them on Instagram for updates. I don't know, maybe the prices will go down when they are a little bit more mass, mass marketed, if you will, but like, you know, when like Sriracha had that whole craze where everybody's like, oh my God, Sriracha. I've never been like that big of a Sriracha fan. Like I hope that that happens with Fly By Jing because like it's so much better. It's a million years better than freaking Sriracha. I can also wholeheartedly vouch for the fact that I have, you know, communicated with the, I guess the owner through their Instagram. Such nice people, such incredibly good, nice people. Just so sincerely grateful and excited about what they're doing. Yeah. Just a, a good company to support regardless, but their product is divine. <laughs> All right, guys, we got two media favorites. I don't have any podcasts for you this month because I have just been working my way through the You're Wrong About catalog, like their backlog. They've been making podcasts since 2018 and I enjoy every single one of them, except for the ones with crimes against children for some reason. For some reason, I can't imagine why. I just like can't stomach that stuff anymore. But the rest of them, that's what I've been doing. So if you haven't listened to You're Wrong About, go listen to You're Wrong About. It's fantastic, but um, I put that in my favorites last month. Anyway. The first one I want to talk about is The White Lotus. <laughs> so on HBO, there was like no real fanfare made about it. And there was just suddenly like this, oh, this is a new show, you know, whatever. It kind, of, it kind of emerged just on the HBO Max queue. And Mike just opened it up and it's got Connie Britton in it. It's got uh, the girl from Why Women Kill, who is like so beautiful. It's got Jennifer Coolidge in it. It's got one of the girls from Euphoria in it, and she's just a nightmare. But regardless, it is a dark comedy of a bunch of people who have shown up at this one resort in Hawaii for all of their own personal reasons. There is a honeymooning couple. There is a woman who is trying to scatter her mother's ashes. At first, you're just totally like getting the feel of all of you. Like, is something horrible going to happen? And nothing really horrible is going to happen. You kind of have to relax into the show and realize that they're all going to have medium stressful misadventures and that you can't really be rooting for, well, you could definitely root for Jennifer Coolidge. Like I would, she's the one I'm rooting for the whole time. But the first scene in the whole show basically is, you know, the guy arriving to the airport to go back home from his honeymoon. And, you know, they're talking about the fact that there's a body on the plane and no one, you know, you don't know who it is. And that's the whole exposition of the show is like who, not even who done it, like who is it? Who's the person, what body is on the plane? So one of the characters is gonna die at some point. And um, it just, it really, really doesn't disappoint. It is so good. And if you're a Jennifer Coolidge lover, 
<laughs> if you if you watch any Jamie French, I think that she like turns people into Jennifer Coolidge fans. But uh, Jennifer Coolidge is just she's just iconic. She's so iconic, and she is in such good form in this show. It's like they they obviously like wrote the role specifically for her because it's the most Jennifer Coolidge. But also like stretching herself as an actress. She's not just kind of like a little, uh, you know, slapstick sideshow act. Like she's so excellent. <laughs> the whole thing is so good. That's what I love about HBO. It's the complete opposite of Netflix. Netflix is like, oh, you have these three interest categories. Let's see if we can crank a show out about that. HBO is like, we're going to put out one show and it's going to blow your mind and you didn't even know you needed it. I, just, I don't know. I told Mike the other night, I'm just gonna digress here, but like I said, I kind of miss the pre-algorithm like TV world where shows weren't a mirror <laughs> because when all of the content is a mirror, <laughs> it just shows us how dumb we are and how stupid our interests are. Like Netflix just keeping like shoving things back at us. I'm like, ew, gross. That is what people are interested in, isn't it? Just like, you know, reality TV shows where people have never met each other and then they get married. You're like, eh, really? Yep, that's what the algorithm said people liked, you know, and that's just really depressing. I would rather them just guess at it and at least give us a little bit of credit for being somewhat intellectual. Anyway, um, yeah, HBO is still out here like making slightly cerebral content and they're using their money to make like, you know, truly cinematic production value and things like that. It's just, it's a good show. Watch White Lotus. It's great. Not with children. <laughs> Do not watch it with children. Not for children. And then the other one is, I don't know why it took us so long to get around to this, but what we do in the shadows on, on Hulu just gets better and better. I think it popped up on Hulu because they're bringing up third season the September 15th, I think. So maybe even sooner than that. I'm not sure. I'm not, I know that there's a new season of Nailed It coming out on September 15th. That's what I do know. I'm really excited about that too. If you have never watched What We Do in the Shadows, it started out as like a one-time mockumentary from the guys who did uh, uh, the chords, flying, the flying chords. Jermaine. Uh, Fly the Concords. Uh, steel Trap. Yeah, started out as like the guys who did Flight of the Concords, and yeah, I didn't realize it had been adapted into a full TV show. And it's not Jermaine anymore, although he does make a couple of cameos, basically about vampires that have been around for, you know, about a thousand years or so, and them living their mundane vampire lives on Staten Island and it is so stinking funny and it starts out funny and it just keeps getting funnier like they're they have one guy that lives with them and I'm not sure that this was in the original mockumentary but he's like a psychic vampire and I don't mean like he's a vampire who's psychic I mean instead of feeding on blood he feeds on people's energy and so he's just horribly aggressively boring and he works in you know an office full of cubicles and just sucks the life out of people with small talk and it's such a good idea for a character. It's just such an excellent subplot. The whole thing is like that, where I just the jokes and there is actual character development and the, the, the acting, the acting is so great. So it's three of them basically, and two of them are married. The woman, Nadja, she, the accents, first of all, is like these hilarious, like Transylvanian accents, I guess are so hilarious and just the way that they pronounce everything it's like on the level of Moira Rose in the sense that you just like want to repeat everything after them every time they say it. <laughs> but yeah I just I can't say enough about it and a lot of times these things tend to fall flat after like the first season. I will say we just started the second season and it's even better than the first season. It is so funny. Um, so if you need a laugh because that was where we were at like all this stuff had just been going on and the news was just as miserable as ever. And Mike and I like turned the TV on and he's like, what do you wanna watch? And I was like, just make me laugh. I just wanna laugh. And Hulu, I will say is like the Burger King to our Netflix McDonald's, you know? And I was just like, I guess, you know, it's open Hulu. It's, you know, there's the two. There's like, you know, Coke and Pepsi. It's the Pepsi. I don't know, we just decided to open Hulu and I was like, all right, fine, we'll watch this dumb show, whatever. No, it's not dumb. It's hilarious and fantastic. And I, we love it so much, what we do in the shadows. So yeah, very, very funny if you need a laugh, which I think we all do right now. Um, 
yeah, that's kind of it for my faves this month, guys. I have been loving a lot of things, but there are a lot of the same things that I've been loving. Like I said, the podcasts and everything, and I, I ran out of episodes of Maintenance Phase a long time ago. So I'm just waiting, I'm actually like having to listen to them as they come now, which is, you know, unfortunate. But <sighs> let me know what your favorites are. And I, I hope that you guys enjoy this. I know I'm not my like normal bright ray of sunshine today, but that is because it is the second day of my period. <laughs> I have a zit that is like the size of the Empire State Building, like right there. It hurts very, very much. Like, I'm gonna go have some Baskin Robbins for lunch, which is something that I've been doing more times than I want to admit lately. But um, yeah, gonna go have some mint chocolate chip. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If this is my first video you're watching, hit the subscribe button. I promise they only get f more fun from here. <laughs> and uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> God, I'm a disaster today.